Welcome everybody uh, to the final episode of ACES Systems Main Rotor Track and Balance. I wanted to thank everybody that's uh, attending today and also thank everyone uh, that's been track going with us through this whole process, uh, all the webinars and uh, joining for each one of those. Uh, please make sure that you follow up. Uh, we did offer, like I said at the beginning of this, uh, the uh, complete certificate of completion. Uh, make sure that you get that, uh, you send in your inf information so we can get that to you. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk to you today about is the agains <laughs> that I keep mentioning. <laughs> And also speaking fast, so I do speak fast. Uh, that has come up uh, along with the many agains, I do say. Uh, but anyway, I appreciate you all uh, in, being enduring through all that process. Uh, on June 11th, so main rotor track and balance is what we're covering today with Todd Underwood, our technical support guy. And I'll t from that point, I'm going to turn this over to Todd Underwood, who will go through the agenda for today. All right. Main rotor track and balance. That's what we're going to do today. Final big grand finale. Uh, we've kind of went through all the other things that uh, you would need up to this point as far as learning how to navigate the analyzer, the application notes, the setups. Uh, we've done tail rotor balance, uh, which is a simple, a simpler process, I should say. And today we're going to do main rotor track and balance. Again, as you guys know, no helicopter in here. I'll be using my virtual machine. Uh, so we'll display that here in a little bit, and uh, it will show the screens of the analyzer just as if you were seeing them. Um, so we're going to cover main rotor track and balance. We're going to talk a little bit about types of vibrations and adjustments. Uh, very helpful when you're doing a main rotor track and balance when you understand what types of vibrations uh, there are and what type of adjustments fix or affect those vibrations. Uh, it's not all inclusive. It's just kind of a generic. Uh, go through the steps and to help you out. Every aircraft is a little bit different, so your particular aircraft uh, may have its own uh, little quirks, of course. And we'll walk through the process and then we'll talk about some of the tips. I tried forever the other day to find a quote that I'd seen in an old H1, UH1 manual that basically equated rotor track and balance to uh, black magic. I couldn't say, I couldn't find it, unfortunately, but uh, previous to, you know, digital equipment, it, it certainly was uh, something that eluded a lot of people, and the process has been really refined over the years. Uh, our equipment, with digital equipment and updated charts, uh, we've made a, a lot of progress. So, no, we don't need a Ouija board. I know it's weird spelling, but that's how you spell it. So, no Ouija board, board required, and hopefully, because rotor track and balance has caused a lot of gray hairs, and uh, for Cree chiefs and headaches around the world, hopefully we'll eliminate some of that by walking through this process and talking about some of the different, uh, some, of the, some of the items that we had listed there. So first, let's talk about types of vibrations. We all know uh, vertical and lateral, right? So are the two main vibrations on a helicopter. Vertical is generically defined as an aerodynamic imbalance as a result of unequal lift produced by the main rotor blades. It can also be referred to as a cord imbalance. This is typically the result of a blade cord profile variance from one blade to the next, either by manufacturing, by one blade's new, one blade's old and worn, uh, or improper adjustment of the pitch links and trim tabs, and or trim tabs, I, sh trim tabs, I should say. That's typically what's going to provide you a vertical vibration provide you like you want it. What? Uh, typical, the lateral, right? So lateral vibration is an unequal distribution of mass. That mass imbalance, or of, of mass imbalance in the rotor head. The imbalance is a heavy spot in the rotor system that can be felt during rotation. The greater the mass imbalance or farther the mass imbalance is from the center of rotation, the greater their severity. Also known as a span imbalance. A lateral vibration may also be felt when an aircraft is out of track or has a vertical imbalance. So this is starting to kind of, you're starting to kind of see where they tie together. One affects the other, right? They all three affect each other. Uh, or has a, so track or has a vertical imbalance. The lateral vibration is a result of the airframe rolling around the mass effect caused by the unequal lip blade lift. Great, you know, if you have, especially I, I saw a while back, a Robinson, a uh, guy was having a problem. He was making, kept making weight adjustments because he wanted to fix the lateral first when his first runs 
but he had a blade that was, I don't know, it was like three inches, four inches out of track. It was one blade was just crazy high. And I'm like, well, why don't you adjust that track just a little bit and see if it affects your lateral. So if you do your first run, you got blades flying all over the place. A lot of the manuals will guide you like this. Some manuals don't. Uh, you know, Bell, like Bell 407, uh, some few of the other ones, they'll, they'll guide you and say, look, get your blade track uh, perfect or as perfect as you can before you start making other adjustments. Because if you have a blade that's severely out of track, it's going to affect your other readings. Tracking. We all know what tracking it is. Tracking the main rear blades refers to adjusting the blade tips to make them fly in the same rato rotational plane. Does not always result in the smoothest ride, right? The desired result of the tracking balance is to have the smoothest ride. Don't let the pilot or yourself get tunnel vision on having a perfect track in flight. We want to have that good flat track on the ground once you go flying. Now again, this depends on your aircraft. This is general, uh, but in, typically once you go forward flight, you're not too concerned about what that trip, trip, trip tip path sorry, looks like. What we're concerned about is the vibrations. So if your blades stagger out a little bit because of the adjustments you're making to fight the vertical vibration, and the vertical vibration is going down and the ride is great, stop focusing on that perfect track. Bell 407 manual uh, has a little blurb in there that uh, actually explains that. And what it's talking about is there's two, flight, or two uh, setups for the Bell 407. So there's an initial flight plan and a flight flight plan. But when using the flight flight plan, the objective is to reduce the one per rev vibration. So the vibration data is more important than the track data in the determination of requirements for rotor adjustments. So vibration is more important than track once you go forward flight. Again, your particular aircraft may say something different. This is just kind of general info, right? Let me get some more. Types of adjustments. Everybody knows all the different types of adjustments. Uh, I don't think we always think about what that adjustment is affecting or what else it might be affecting. Uh, your pitch links obviously change the tip path plane of the blades through all speeds. So it's going to be a consistent from zero knots to 110. Whatever that change is you made, it's going to affect it the same throughout all speeds. It will affect vertical and lateral vibrations. Trim tabs are going to be a little bit different. Trim tabs change the tip path plane of the blades at higher speeds. Little or no effect on the ground, uh, increased effect with speed. Again, there are some airplanes that are a little bit different. MD500, the whole blade is a trim tab. You've got like five different areas to adjust it. So this is just generic information. Make sure you look at your specific aircraft manual. Uh, the trim tabs primarily affect vertical vibrations. You'll see them used a lot. Typical aircraft setup is going to address the ground uh, uh, tip path, hover lateral, and in forward flight, it usually is going to be attack looking at the vertical with either the pitch links or the trim tabs. There are some aircraft that do sweep adjustments. Uh, a lot of guys don't like doing them. UH-1s, uh, MD-500s, a few others. Uh, that's going to change the mass of the rotor at all air speeds. It primarily affects lateral vibrations. It's actually changing the center of gravity of that blade forward or aft. Tip weight. Again, not all aircraft have this. Some do, some don't. Changes the mass of the rotor at all speeds and primarily affects lateral vibration. Hub weight changes the mass of the rotor at all air speeds and primarily affects lateral vibration. Sounds familiar. Blade cord wise weight changes the tip path of the plane of the blades and has large effects of vertical vibration levels on vertical vibration levels and lateral vibration levels in ground and a hover. And I put my little legal disclaimer down there that there are exceptions to pretty much every one of these rules. That's what keeps helicopters interesting. Uh, so make sure you check your manual. We're not airplanes, we're not boring. Uh, we, helicopters, like I said, every helicopter is a little bit different. All the adjustments are a little bit different. Uh, the process to track and balance the aircraft may vary from aircraft to aircraft. Get in your manual, see what they have written down there, and use that information along with our program to, to get the best results. So. 
just like we talked about in uh, tail rotor track and balance, the basic things you need to do, you need to get your application note out, get it ready so you have all the information you need to know how to install equipment and how to walk through the process. You've probably already got your setup if you've done your tail. Uh, we know how to load it into the Cobra 2. We looked at the app note to figure out how to install our equipment and we've reviewed our maintenance manual. We've even looked at some of the polar charts if they're available in there so we can kind of bounce what we see in the polar chart off the adjustments we're getting. We've done all that stuff, so we're ready to start a job. All right, so we're going to do the same thing we did with tail rotor. We're just going to run through it on my virtual machine. And Jerry will switch over to the next view there. Yep, no worries. Okay, familiar view, main menu. We're going to choose main rotor track and balance. And we're going to choose start job. And today, I was working on something here, so it asked me if I wanted to resume this job, and I'm going to say no by using the function key, and it's going to generate a list of setups. I'm going to use this one, AS350. Webinar. Finale, all right? Grand finale. We got the aircraft registration in there, and we got the some, put some hours in there for it. But once we have identified the job, we'll go ahead and press OK. And remember, it's, when I talked about it the other day, uh, down at the function keys at the bottom, the customer and the aircraft reg. If you've already put a bunch of aircraft in there, you can just go to that list and grab the name and pre-populate that stuff. So the connect sensor screen is going to come up. This time it's going to remind us that we're connected to speed sensor TAC channel 1. Our vertical is channel A and our lateral is channel B. In main rotor track and balance, the vertical is always going to be A, lateral is always going to be B. Even on Robinsons or some of the other aircraft that only collect lateral, it's still B. We just don't connect A up. Uh, down at the bottom you'll see tracking device again. It's because I'm using the virtual machine, it's going to say simulation. It's not going to say tracks uh, or strobe, whichever you may be using. So we're all connected up, and we're ready to move forward. A list of conditions, or as we call them, regimes come up, and we're ready to collect data. The, run, the uh, data screen comes up. It was waiting, acquiring. You can see it's already got some numbers in there. It's going through the process. And we've got the green bar that says it's okay. Again, we've got the... Uh, Polar chart view you can switch over to, or you can go back to the thermal bar view or the uh, standard view. So now that we've collected data for ground, it looks like we get 0.32 for vertical and 0.45 for lateral. So we'll probably get a solution. Once we review the data, you can see the vibration data up top, your lead lag data, and your blade tracking data. Now, as you can see, you got a pretty bad lateral. And you got a blade way out of track. It's going to, at this point, when you review the data, press OK, you go back to the next screen for uh, select the next condition. Since they're in, in the first run or on ground, since there were items that were out of limits, F3 pops up and says adjust. If your lateral and your vertical and your blade track were all within limits, that button would not pop up there. You won't see it. So when adjust comes up down there, you know that you have an adjustment. Now, at that point, it's up to you, the pilot or the mechanic, to determine whether or not the aircraft is safe to move forward to the next condition or if you want to stop and address that, right? When you looked at that blade track, it looked pretty bad. So we're going to go ahead and hit adjust. It's going to calculate a solution. It gave us two solutions because there were two things out of limits. The lateral was out of limits and the track was out of limits. But like we talked earlier, uh, I want to address the track first because it's influencing the lateral. It's so far out of track. So we're going to select track. It's going to give me a solution of four flats, 4.43. I'm going to round that to four. And that's a positive number, so we know we're bringing it up. So we're going to enter four flats on that. 
we're going to press OK, and it's going to go right back to run two, where we can start collecting data again. I'm going to tweak our virtual machine. We will collect the data for the second time and see what happened. Now, again, this is just a simulation, so I changed the blade track because we made an adjustment on there. And you can see it dropped down the lateral. I didn't go in there and change the vertical. It could have changed the vertical some, too. Now, this is not a live aircraft, so I did want to display, though, but by getting that blade in track, it's going to reduce that lateral a little bit. It's still out of limits and we're still going to have to address it, but that, that's the better way to do it, is get the track in shape first and then attack the lateral. So again, we've collected the data for run two on ground. We've got the green bar saying we're good. We're going to press OK. Now we can see our blade track looks a lot better. I believe the limit for the blade track on this is uh, at this point it's either 10 or 20 millimeters. I can't remember now. This is a metric setup, so these are metric numbers we're looking at. Uh, but the lateral and the vertical are still out of limits. So we review our data. We've, we're happy with it. We still have the options down at the bottom to retake all of them, retake vibration only, or retake track only, or look at it in a polar chart view. Right now, we know we, we're pretty happy with that. We're going to press OK. and move on to the next screen. Now, our vibrations are still a little bit out. Our track looked pretty good. We're going to go ahead and collect hover, even though we had it just on that screen. Let's go ahead and collect hover. And I'm going to just tweak it a little bit just so it looks a little different for y'all. So we collect the hover. Review our data. If I get back over on the right screen. Review our data. There we go. All the same options available. Press OK. At this point, we've done ground and hover. We've still got vertical and lateral out of limits. As you can see, the adjust button is down there. So let's take a look at it. It'll optimize the solution. Now, if you notice that time, it only came up with one solution. I must have dropped one down below because I, I did tweak this setup a little bit. Uh, so on the first run, you notice that we had a track and a lateral adjustment, two things were out of limits. On this run, as soon as I pressed adjust, it went to this screen, which means there's only one adjustment that it's offering. So it's only addressing uh, the lateral right now. I believe this because I think vertical is not on this chart, and we'll go back and look at it. I don't think. I've got it right here. I don't think they care about vertical on the ground or hover. That's right. So we're monitoring it, but we're not calculating solutions for it. And that's based on the chart. If you remember from back when we talked about setups, where your zeros and your ones and your vertical and your lateral and your track uh, columns are, we're monitoring vertical vibrations, but we're not calculating any solutions for them at this time. And that's based on the maintenance manual. So. The only solution it gave us was for plates, which is what this AS350 uses uh, for lateral weight. So we'll put three on there and 1.48. We'll just round it to one and we'll press enter. And now we're ready for run three. So hopefully by doing that, that addressed our lateral and we'll go ahead and start run three and see how things look. Now, if you notice, if somebody's really paying attention out there, I have not been changing the clock angle on each run. Your clock angle is going to change. Uh, it's going to move around a little bit. Keep an eye on it and see if you have a big phase shift or it just keeps jumping around. Uh, but I have not changed it every time we've done one of these. So it's been saying 416 and, and 3 down there at the bottom. So. In case anybody caught that, just wanted to own up to it to begin with. So run three now. Our vertical's still pretty high. Our lateral's good. Our track's good. We did the ground run. We feel pretty comfortable with it. We're going to press OK and go to a hover. Magically, the numbers are the same because I didn't change them. We're going to press OK. 
review our data after the hover. We're still pretty happy with everything. So we're going to go to forward flight. AS 350, they do MCP. They just kind of skip from hover and go flat out as fast as you can go. I'm not sure who came up with that track and balance theory, but it's short and sweet, I guess. So they don't really care about the airspeeds in between. So we've collected for MCP. Again, lateral is good. Vertical is a little high. Reviewed our data. Still looks the same. Now we've got an adjustment again, right? Now, because we're monitoring vertical in MCP and 45 MCP, we're going to get a vertical adjustment. And like I talked in the beginning about adjustments, this vertical adjustment can be done a couple of different ways. It can be done with the pitch link or the trim tabs. On the AS350, it's set up to be addressed with trim tab adjustments. So the yellow is 0.17 of a degree. Probably going to ignore that adjustment. That's pretty small. But we'll do the three degree adjustment that they're asking for on the blue blade. Once we're done with that, we're going to press OK. It automatically goes back and it's ready for run four. Now, I did that. It shouldn't went down lower than 0.21, but I did that just for illustration purposes. Uh, so that tab adjustment didn't have the full effect, or maybe it sprang back a little bit. Trim tabs, you bend them, they'll kind of bounce back a little bit if you're not careful. Uh, so for whatever reason, that three degrees didn't quite kill all the vertical. We can see everything else is still holding in there pretty good. So we'll go through the process of collecting data all the way through all the conditions. That's another recommendation we make is collect as much data as possible before making an adjustment. If you feel safe, if it's slightly out of limits, the pilot feels safe, you feel safe, collect as much data as you can because you'll get a better picture of what's going on in the aircraft throughout all conditions of flight and have more knowledge and more data to make a better decision on what adjustment you're going to make. So we're going to run through these, get all the way to the end. I feel safe flying this virtual machine computer. Yeah, I do. Might make Scott a little air sick. He's, he's a little wimpy like that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm blazing through these screens. I want to get to the end. Okay, so we did all four conditions. Our vertical is still out. Lateral is good. Blade track's good. So, again, it only gave me one choice. It didn't give me a list of solutions because vertical is the only thing out. Now, you notice it's making a lot bigger of adjustment. That's because the analyzer, I, I kind of lied to the analyzer. I put the appropriate adjustment in there, which should have taken almost all that vibration out. But I told the analyzer that it didn't by, by, because I put the data into it that way. So now it's like, well, wait a minute. It, it didn't knock that vibration down near as far as I want. That's why this adjustment is bigger, right? Because it didn't have, the original adjustment didn't have the effect that it should have. So now it's asking for a lot bigger one. And that may even be too big of an adjustment for this particular blade. Again, this is a simulated uh, experiment. Now, so we made that adjustment. This is not something that I recommend. This is what a lot of guys do. You just flew the aircraft through ground hover MCP, 45 MCP, and everything was good except for 45 MCP. So what they'll do, make the adjustment, come back, and they'll go fly. They won't collect any data until they get to 45 MCP. That's okay, and you can do that, but you're not really getting a complete picture again. You made it a big adjustment on the blade. What if it affected something else? What if something, you know, what if? It's better just to look at the whole picture. It doesn't take that long to collect data, about 30 seconds in each regime. Uh, you've got to go from ground to hover to MCP to get to 45 MCP. You don't transport there like the Jetsons. So just do all four, uh, just like a normal run, and collect as much data as you can before you do that. Um, no questions so far? Wow. You guys are quiet out there today. Just jokes. People got jokes and I don't hear them? They're not good jokes? All right then. Chadley. Yeah. So now you can tell vibration levels are good, track is good. 
on the ground and we'll keep pressing through making adjustments and then I'll give you uh, one example I want to show another um, screen because I want I want to stress the fact that you will be depending on your particular aircraft be presented with multiple adjustments and it's the technicians responsibility to figure out what adjustment to make right it's kind of like why well, I want to lead off with the types of adjustments and the types of vibrations and what affects what so if the very first adjustment the analyzer gives you so as you can see we're down here now no no adjustments recommended everything's within limits and we're gonna hit F5 to quit the job so If you're presented with a vertical and a lateral and a track adjustment, it's up to you to decide which adjustment to make. That's based on your knowledge of the aircraft, knowledge of the process, um, how the different adjustments affect, affect different things. Um, let me set this up for you real quick. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm only going to go through one regime uh, all right so come back over here all right so we're going to go straight to MCP because I know I think it's collecting lateral also I know it's collecting vertical let me double check I wanted to make sure that I could give you all three yes so in MCP we're doing we're, we're monitoring vertical lateral and track and providing solutions for all three. So I've set them all up to be able to give three solutions so you guys see what that screen looks like because you will be presented with this typically early on in the balance process where the blades are out of track, everything's rough, especially if you've had an aircraft all tore apart. So we've got our adjust button. I didn't get the track because, I'm, I'm, oh, I turned it up, didn't I? So it will look like this. I didn't put the track in there correctly. But it will be, right now, you've got lateral and vertical, and you're in forward flight. And you have to decide which one to make. I talked about this before when we went through the setups. There is a button down at the bottom that says All Adjust, where it will allow you to make two different types of adjustments. It's not recommended in the ACES analyzer to mix types of adjustments. It's not recommended to make pitch link adjustments and tab adjustments at the same time or tab and weight, or weight and pitch link. It's okay to make five pitch links. It's okay to make five tabs. It's okay to add a bunch of weight. Don't mix those types because we cannot predict the outcome of those mixed adjustments. If you feel confident in them, and the only way, I, only time I usually recommend this is if it's on the ground and the lateral is really bad or the track's really, you got two or three things going on, you can do that for maybe the first adjustment on the ground and see how it comes out. Once you're in forward flight, I don't recommend mixing them like this. If you do, we've provided you, if you really like rolling the dice, uh, we've provided you a way to do that by pressing all adjust down at the bottom. Because right now, if you choose lateral or vertical, it's going to let you make this adjustment. As soon as you press OK, it's going to start the next run. It's not going to let you make that vertical adjustment because you already chose the lateral. And I'll go back. Now, if you chose the vertical, same way. You can enter the vertical adjustment. You cannot enter the lateral. If you press all adjust, we pop up that big warning, which is kind of what I just said. Making multiple, multiple types of adjustments are not recommended. Doing so can cause an overcorrection and have a negative impact on further solutions. So not only may it not improve the aircraft, but it's not going to improve the next solution that the analyzer gives you either. So, Please, if you use this option, be very confident in your skills and what, uh, the, what the aircraft's going to do and what the outcome is going to be. So if you do want to complete that, press F5 again if you think uh, all the ICFs are correct and you know what the impact is going to be. And then it will allow you to make, press OK. We just did the lateral. Now we're doing the vertical, and it's allowing us to make both adjustments. 
And then once we've made vertical and lateral, we're going back and start and run two. So that is a feature that's in there. I wanted you guys to see that screen though where multiple options come up and know that most of the time that's where you're going to have to figure out, okay, do I attack the track first? Do I attack the lateral first? Do I do the hover first? It depends on your aircraft what condition you're in when you get those adjustments, whether you're on the ground or if you're at 45 MCP, uh, there's a lot of factors involved there. So just be aware that making the wrong choice may, may drag the balance job out a little bit. You may eventually end up getting there, uh, but it's gonna drag it out a little bit. And that kind of goes back to those previous screens of understanding the different vibrations and how the different adjustments affect them or affect multiple things. Uh, sorry. Question came. That's why. That's why I was kind of hung there. All right. So I'm not sure there's anything else I can show you in the analyzer. Most of the stuff that we've covered, we covered in the setups. Uh, I've covered running through tail rotor and main rotor as far as creating reports and stuff like that. Reviewing jobs. Uh, I'll press the home key and get out of here. So, so, yes, sir. Sorry, real quick. No. Again, I know the guys out here probably know, but what is the 45? What's 45 MCP? MCP, every, every, again, every manufacturer, that's why your helicopter is interesting. Everybody does everything different. It's VH or VNE or MCP. It's max continuous. It, for whatever reason, somebody came up with the idea to do a track and balance check on an AS350 at a 45 degree banked turn at MCP. So it's a very fast, big circle. Right. MCP is mass continuous power, so basically it's, it's as fast as it will fly within the limits of the airframe, or with the lim limits of the manual. And then 45 MCP is go do it in a circle, which I had a chance to do out with the uh, San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. Oh, when you were out here for the demo? Yep. Okay. Yep. Oh. Which was pretty cool. I had never done that before. Um, I've got another question here real quick. I said, will this learn based on your adjustments or are you just making sure you don't exceed balance weights or tab adjustment limits? There, okay, so that's two questions, to be fair. Say the first one again. It says, based on your adjustments. Yes, it learns, well, what it learns on, it learns based on your adjustments and the outcome of those adjustments, right? So it looks at, it looks at the chart that's just in the setup, and let's take pitch links, for example. And if it says four flats equals an inch, and you make a four flat adjustment, and the blade moves an inch and a half, well, it's gonna go, wait a minute, that chart's just a little bit off. So it may start tweaking that a little bit, right? It's gonna tweak that chart to match the actual outcome of your adjustment. It does the same thing with weight or trim tabs, uh, sweep, any of those type of things. It, it looks at all those factors to figure out the accuracy of the chart and then adjust the setup within the re restrictions that we've put on it as far as how much we'll let it learn. And the other one was, the other part of it was. Okay, so this is from Rob. Again, the guy that asked just yeah. previous question. So the 45 MCP is to check the frequency no, adapters. The previous question was too. Oh, questions. sorry, yeah. It said just making sure you don't exceed balance weights or tab adjustment limits. Go. So that, that's in this particular application in this balancer, that is the technician's responsibility, right? As far as too many degrees on your tab, uh, too, much, too many twists on the, uh, a, a sweep, or too much sweep, whatever the adjustment limitations are, that's the technician's responsibility to monitor what he's doing in accordance with his maintenance manual. The only real warning that's provided uh, like that is in tail rotor where it says max balance weights and it'll pop that number up but we but it, we won't restrict them from putting more on right they could put if it says the max balance weight is 20 grams they could enter 25 grams as a solution and press right on so we leave it in the hands of the qualified maintenance technician to monitor that okay. there's a little feedback from rob too he said something on that 45 mcp yeah he says is to check is a, he said the 45 mcp is to check your frequency adapters uh, for as they all they'll split if they're soft must be uh, oh for the absorbers vibration absorbers must be, again must be. i said yeah some feedback yeah i don't know i got to do it once but it was pretty cool he said and this was this from db he says bell 407 uh, mm wants two vertical accelerometers is that an issue in, sort of uh, the older Bell 407 maintenance manual had a vertical and a lateral. 
the newer Bell 407 manual has a vertical lateral and a second vertical, a forward vertical and an aft vertical. The aft vertical, from my understanding of it, and this has been a while since I looked at it, but it's only used to monitor a four per rev, right? So it does require that. You can do the, from the way I understand the manual, you can do the track and balance using your vertical and your lateral, get your one per rev, vertical laterals, all that good, track's good. Then you could do a vibe survey and you could use that vertical sen uh, sensor to see what your four per is. Because all that second vertical sensor is doing is just getting a reading. And then if that reading is out of limits, you go up and adjust your from uh, dampener assembly on your main rotor head by removing weights. So we wouldn't be providing a, a, a solution for that aft sensor. It's just to monitor the IPS level and if it's above a certain level, you take X and number of weights off and if it's below or so forth. Okay. So, yeah, I'm familiar with that. That's something they changed and um, they're not real clear about it because like I said, the way I interpret it, you can do the track and balance with the two. That's kind of secondary. Then you go check your four per. So I don't think you need all three of them at one time. Okay. Yeah. Um, I can't hear me, but I'm going to repeat the question. The 412 also requires two vertical accelerometers. Is this going to be the same as four, the 407? I don't know. That might be a newer Bell 412 manual than I have. I know we've been doing the Bell 412. Um, I don't know. We'd have, to, we'd have to look it up. Whoever that is, if you got a newer version of the Bell 412 manual, send it to me. Support at acesystems.com. The only way we get maintenance manuals is from our customers. Uh, and sometimes I'm working off very dated uh, manuals. So if you've got a newer one, that's greatly appreciated. So, where am I at? Let's go back to, I guess back to. One more, one more question. Yeah. Part of the same question. Same person I asked. Same question I asked. How do I enter multiple changes without flipping back to the one that I have? How do you, by using that all adjust button. Right. If you use that all adjust button, it's going to, and maybe I didn't demonstrate that very well. It's going to, if there's two adjustments on the screen, or two available adjustments, and you use the all adjust button, it's going to pop up the first one, say it's lateral, you're going to put your uh, adjustments in there, you're going to press OK, it's going to go to vertical, you're going to put your adjustment in there, you're going to press OK, then it's going to start the next run. So it's going to do it automatically, and I didn't repeat the question on air like you asked me to again, so you need to speak up. They ask, they ask how we do that multiple adjustments again. Uh, and the first question with that I did not repeat on the air was about the Bell 412 uh, using two vertical sensors also. And like I said, I'm not, not aware of that. If you have a newer manual, please send it to me. Uh, so if you go back over to the main menu on the analyzer, all the same functions that we've been looking at in, the, in different uh, webinars as far as the setups and the tail rotor, go to main rotor balance. You know, you can resume an incomplete job. Uh, you can manage the jobs. Underneath manage jobs, there's a bunch of functions. You can review it, create a report, delete them, delete them all, export them. Um, I love the reports. They give me a lot of information. Uh, they're great for you guys to provide to your customers or just for your historical documents. And you can review, which is a nice feature also. We'll go to the webinar finale to see the one we did. Because it'll bring it up where you can, if you notice at the top screen, it says run one and condition ground. If you look down at the bottom of the screen, you can cycle through the runs with the side arrow keys on the analyzer on the bottom left corner and on the bottom right corner on this screen. On your analyzer, it's going to be the arrow keys that are all on one area of the pad, uh, but it's just the side to side keys or the up and down keys will go through. I'll do the, I'll do the conditions so we can scroll through. Sorry. Conditions run one only had one condition, right? Because we collected data on the ground and then we made an adjustment, and went to run two. Run two, we had ground and hover, and that's it. Because then we made an adjustment. Run three, we got ground, hover, MCP, 
we didn't do the last, right, because we did, went ahead and made another adjustment. So let's go back to ground. Run four, we should have them all, right? So now we got ground, hover, MCP, and 45 MCP. And again, just like in the other version, you can look at the tail rotor, or I mean, just like in the tail rotor, you can look at it in a polar chart view. Uh, and the only difference here is, uh, if you notice the bottom left corner, you're changing between vertical and lateral, not between um, runs. The runs show up underneath it. So you got your condition on the right, where you can go up and down with the arrow keys. The vibe channel changing between vertical and lateral in the view. And then if we go back to the review screen, back to where we were. You can also view the adjustments that have been made by using the view adjust button and you'll see the suggested and the installed. You've got your arrow keys controlling the runs. Also we're on run four here. You can scroll through run three. The adjustment type. This is different types of adjustment which we didn't make more than one. If you, That would only come in there if you had more than one type on one or more than one type of adjustment on one run. That shows a good example of that. There you go, is run one. So run one, we had a lateral and a track suggested adjustment. We chose not to do the lateral, so it doesn't show anything installed there, but we did the track. So if you scroll through the adjustment types, it shows what we did on run one. Let's go back to the data screen, back to there. Oop, I hit the wrong button, sorry. It's gonna pop something stupid up. That's my bad. Again, list of the jobs that are available, the setups. That's about it in the analyzer. Let's, uh, nobody's got any more questions about stuff. Let's switch over to the, back to the, Death by PowerPoint. I know that was a lot of information to cover, so if you guys have any questions, like I said, shoot me an email, support at acesystems.com. I do have a question here. It says, how important is it to tell the analyzer what adjustment I made? Critical. If you want to use the analyzer and get the benefits of having a, you know, a digital analyzer that's going to learn and adapt to what's going on and provide you better solutions. If you're not, and I see it a lot, and, and I think a lot of it is just a lack of training on, on, on our system is, I'll see guys that basically use it as an old Chadwick, whatever, 177, 192 data collector, because they're getting an Ipsum phase, they're plotting their own adjustments, and then they're starting another run. Because I'll look at the runs, and there'll be four, five, six runs, and underneath the installed column, it's always zeros. There's nothing ever installed. So the analyzer is not learning anything, and it's not providing you good good solutions because it doesn't know what you've been doing. You've been making changes the whole time, but you haven't told the analyzer, so it's completely confused. Because every time the vibration changes, the clock angle changes, a blade moves, but yet you didn't make an adjustment. So it it it, it starts losing its mind on what to do. So it is absolutely critical to tell the analyzer what you've done, and. I guess I think I covered this in tail rotor. I should obviously cover it in main because I may have some different people in here. Uh, and when I say that, enter the actual adjustment. Uh, that might be on my next screen, actually, if I got control of. There we go. Tip number one, enter the actual adjustment. Garbage in, garbage out, right? If, you, if it tells you to make a flat, a pitch link adjustment of 1.73 flats, you can't do that, it's two, you put two in there. If you decide that on your knowledge of the aircraft and, and just you've worked it a long time, you know how everything reacts, you're like, I, don't, I think two is too much, let's just do one, that's fine. Just tell it what you did. Uh, if you tell it what you did, it understands now because it sees what happens to the blade. Okay, you told me you only did one flat, yeah, that makes sense, it only moved X amount, everything adds up, now I know how to give you the next solution. If you're not providing it that information, uh, it's not going to be, uh, it, it's going to be a long process to get it balanced. Um, and you're not going to, like I said, you're not going to benefit from any of the uh, cool stuff that's inside of it learning for you.
So garbage in, garbage out, don't do that. Remove, review your maintenance manual and understand the process. A lot of that goes to you know, just understanding what they're looking to do. I'll give a, a Robinson as an example. Robinson, they don't give a crap about vertical. I don't understand why. All they do is lateral on the ground, or lateral on the hover, or on the ground. I think it's on the ground. And then from that point on, it's track. It's a track adjustment. Um, if you know these things ahead of time, it makes the process of doing a track and balance a lot easier. Uh, Bell 407, you know, if you understand that they want to get that knife edge track as best as they can before they go into forward flight, after they go into forward flight, they don't care about it. Uh, to understand if you're monitoring vertical and lateral, just those kind of things, what the limits are, because all those are going to be put in the setup. So uh, that just helps you get a better complete picture of what's going on, why you're getting this adjustment, why you're not getting that adjustment, right? You kind of got to put the two together. You stole my pointer again. There we go. <laughs> uh, I talked about this during the tail rotor uh, session. Anytime, if you're in those in between runs two, three, four, wherever you're at, and you decide you need to take a break, you're getting, you need to part, you shift change, whatever. If you need to stop the job and save it, use the home key. The home key is located directly underneath the USB ports. That will exit the job, save all your data, and allow you to be able to resume it. There are other ways you can exit the job that will end up losing your data, and you won't be able to to resume it. So. Don't do that. Don't, 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 if it says quit job on the screen, don't do that unless you want to quit and delete all your data, right? So quit means delete. If, if you see that and you still have adjustments to make and your vibrations are still out of limits, don't do that. Use the home key. The only time you want to use quit job is when all your things are with the limits. You're at the very end of the process. Everything is good. It's going to give you that option. At that point, when you quit the job, it saves it as a completed job, and the only thing you can do is review it. So when you're in the process, always use the home key to exit. Uh, this will also prevent you from starting job after job after job. You hit the home key. It saves the job. When you go back in, you resume that job, and you choose, right? So you go to... Flip it back over one time, Garrett. Back to the other screen, sorry. There you go. So to resume a job, right, you hit the home key, you saved it, you got all your data in there. You're going to hit main rotor track and balance. You're going to go to resume job. Now, the one that I was doing, I think, did I complete it? I did, didn't I? Because it was webinar finale. Right? It doesn't show up on the list because it was completed. I quit the job, marked it as complete. I cannot resume that job. This is one I was doing earlier today, or these other ones, right? I was doing earlier today. So webinar number four, I did not finish it. If you look out to the left, that little box says I. It's incomplete. That means I can click on it, and I did change the setup. So this is another feature it has. I changed the setup in between quitting that job and resuming it. So it's going to warn me, hey, this setup's been changed. Do you want to proceed? And, and I'm going to. So now it's let me continue this job. It's let me resume that job. And it'll take me back to the most logical point in the process. It won't take you back to the exact page you were on if two pages before that need to be completed to get to that page, right? So don't, don't be alarmed if you resume the job and it doesn't go back to the exact page that you were on. It went back to the most logical place in the process. You can go back to the other one. That, that goes also for at any time you see the back, uh, if you look down at the bottom left corner of your screen on the analyzer, anytime that arrow key there, the back key is highlighted, anytime you're in a balance function, whether it be tail rotor, main rotor, or whatever it is, if you hit the back key, it does not necessarily go back one screen. It takes you back to the most logical place in the process. So if that most logical place is three screens prior, that's where it's going to go. Again, so don't be alarmed if you use that back key while you're in the job or reviewing a job and it kind of seems like it jumps a couple of pages. That's by design in order to get you where you need to be and able to move forward. Does that make sense? Man, I don't know. No, <laughs> Uh, they are on our website underneath the uh, technical library. If you click on, go to support or acesystems.com, click on 
or not technical library, sorry, click on support, and right underneath there, it'll show webinar. In fact, Josh is gonna, or Josh, Jared's gonna pull that up. Good, I was gonna try, and that would try to take me forever. I think they're also on our YouTube channel. So we have a YouTube channel. You can subscribe to that and click the little button thingy or whatever, and you'll get notified anytime we update one. So right there. Yep. And if you guys can't sleep at night, click on that. <laughs> Now see those top ones, those four right there? Those are all airplane ones. So if you need to sleep at night, fire that bad boy up. I guarantee you'll be asleep in about 20, 30 seconds. Right, Josh? If you want to be, get some good quality information, watch the helicopter ones. <laughs> Flip back over my... Uh, I want to see what Josh commented. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> Three, 20 seconds because of this. Good. Balance <laughs> tips. Uh, we talked about using the home key. Talked about starting another run within a job, right? K keeping all that data and not starting multiple jobs. Um, resume job, we talked about that. You keep moving your mouth, don't you? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> something I wanted to bring up. And, and I did it in this setup. It's something that is fairly new. Again, it's one of these features that got implemented in, I believe, SP6. Um, previous to this, if you looked in a main rotor setup, we were pigeonholed, pigeonholed into only having one vibration limit for vertical, one for lateral, and one for track. Okay, so. Now, you can customize the setups. There are aircraft out there that have a little bit larger of a tolerance on the ground, and then as you move into forward flight, that vibration level decreases. If you don't, haven't updated your setup, or if you know that your aircraft have those, get a hold of me or get in there and, and start digging around your manual, get the limits, uh, edit the setup, make a copy of it. You can edit and change the vibration level for each condition, ground, hover, 45, 45 MCP, and for each uh, measurement, vertical, lateral, and track. So you can customize that to actually get solutions when you need them, as opposed to just a blanket uh, vibration level for the whole process. Hey, I do have a question. I'm not this is for my recollection. I said the learning mode, mm -hmm. the learning mode for our analyzer. Does it stop after a certain point, or is it? <laughs> Try me crazy, Jerry. Uh, <laughs> well, we control it. It doesn't stop, but we control it. Right? We right. control it by limiting how much it learns. So it doesn't learn bad data. Do some of our competitors have? Do some of our competitors have learning same have the, offer the same things? Or? Mm, I'm not. I don't want to say anything. I'm not 100 percent sure on. I don't know. Okay, I just want to be sure. Yeah. I'm looking over at somebody else. They say no. So uh, I don't think so. They, but I have limited experience on a couple of those other analyzers because I was I haven't used the. Okay. Um, we talked about. Uh, not starting a new job. Yep, we talked about that. Reports, we talked about that. Great feature for you guys to use. Comes in handy. Also comes in handy for me if I need to look at, if you get a job that's, that's going sideways and you can send it to me. That helps in reviewing a lot. One more time. All right, warranty, support, and service. Interested leading five-year warranty on the Cobra II. One <coughs> year on everything else, 24-7 product technical support. I cover about eight hours of that. Josh gets the rest of it. Uh, five to seven day turn time on service and calibration. You can always get it expedited if you need it quicker than that. I'm trying to rush because I got the, hey, we're about out of time thing. What's next? This was the grand finale. If there's anything that we haven't talked about that you want to talk about or a specific aircraft that you think we can fill up 45 minutes or an hour with, uh, let us know and we'll see what we can do. Right now, uh, I'm not sure what we have scheduled next, but we may take a little break for a little bit. But So give us your feedback. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, and see what we can come up with. Whew. Final <laughs> thoughts? The final, final thoughts with yeah. Scott. Yeah. Well, it is final. final for now. I uh, want to thank you all again for joining for our final webinar uh, series. We really, uh, there's the again, I tell you. It's my favorite word, I believe. But uh, anyway, we're going to be making, in the near future, we're going to be making some uh, other, you know, probably doing some other format, offering some videos, uh, some training. Uh, information and so forth. Uh, we're going to be putting those on our website. Uh, we will probably at some point do some other type of webinar. If there's any suggestion,
please uh, send us the information. Uh, just uh, You can get us at sales at asysystems.com or support at asysystems.com. Uh, interested, again, in upgrading or if you have an existing uh, competitor system, one uh, ASUS systems box, please contact us. We do offer uh, discounts for trading in that equipment uh, as well as our upgrade customers. Again, appreciate you all joining. Uh, have a great rest of the day.